Thank you for joining us. I'm Wendy Echeverria Garcia, a second year student at the University of Oregon, majoring in Latin American studies and indigenous race and ethnic studies, minoring in Spanish and Latinx studies, as well as pursuing a certificate in educational foundation secondary. For the past six months, Cheryl and I have been working together on an exhibition of 20th century prints called Nuestra Imagen Actual, our present image, Mexico and the graphic arts of 1929 to 1956. Good to see you, Wendy. Nice to see you too, Cheryl. Welcome to Almuerzo y Arte part one. I'm Cheryl Hartup, curator of academic programs in Latin American and Caribbean art at the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art at University of Oregon. You can experience the exhibition in person at the JSMA on UO's campus and virtually on the museum's website, jsma.uoregon.edu. Before we start our conversation, we would like to acknowledge and honor the land that we are on and its history. Our program is being held on the traditional lands of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Catlamet, Clackamas, Bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalpuya, Malala, and, other, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia and Willamette rivers. We pay respect and thank the indigenous people for being the original stewards and protectors of these lands. We give gratitude for their continued work and we acknowledge their enduring perseverance and resilience across generations. This calls us to commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit and understand and challenge the past and current practices of colonialism and the communities we call home. Thank you, Wendy. This is our first public program for Nuestra Imagen Actual, and I've enjoyed working with you very much on this project, which is co-organized by the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art and the Portland Art Museum. Support was provided by Art Bridges and by members of don and donors to the JSMA. Portland Art Museum's impressive collection of over 150 prints by Mexican artists inspired the exhibition. I've also enjoyed collaborating with Mary Weaver Chapin, curator of prints and drawings at the Portland Art Museum. Mary and the staff at PAM have been very generous and supportive of the project, lending 50 prints during this time of a global pandemic and forest fires. Wendy, do you remember when we were looking at all those Xeroxes of possible works for the checklist and we decided to focus on prints that speak directly to the viewer about the human condition and that advocate for a more socially and politically just future? I remember that. We didn't have a lot of options from the UO collections, right? You're right. The Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art and University of Oregon Library Special Collections have small but growing collections of early 20th century prints from Mexico. And I hope one day through acquisitions and donations, we'll have dozens of Mexican prints um, that students and faculty can access on campus. In addition to our partner, Portland Art Museum, we are very grateful to Seattle Art Museum, Dr. Lee Ravitz in Seattle, Cecily Quintana and Quintana Galleries in Portland, and UO Library Special Collections for lending important works to Nuestra Imagen Actual. What was it like for you to work on this project? Well, growing up in Oregon, I thought local art museums didn't make enough effort to include the art of Latin America. I've never imagined I would be working on an art exhibition at the University of Oregon where I can learn about my Mexican heritage. There is so much history that each print can teach us, and we work to ensure that the exhibition is rich and diverse dialogue of artistic and political values. The title of the exhibition was inspired by the title of this lithograph on the left by David Alfaro Siqueiros, Nuestra Imagen Actual. The English translation is Our Present Image. Siqueiros made this work in Mexico City in 1947, and he based it on a photograph of Victor Arreviaga, a boxer who he posed with his hands bound. We chose our present image as the title of the exhibition because we want viewers to reflect on how these prints that were made in another country and in the past century speak to our present image today. Are we looking at Nuestra Imagen Actual? Well, this is a tough question. I think there's so much going on in Mexico that this image represents very well. 
and I'd hate to represent Mexico as helpless, dependent, and incapable because of the perception, perceptions that many people have of Latin America, that it's less than. But at the same time, there are movements in Latin America that work towards breaking those bondages. If I could time travel, I'd visit Mexico in the 1920s and 30s. It was an exciting time of prevailing optimism and creativity in the aftermath of the Mexican Revolution. Artists, writers, activists, and intellectuals viewed Mexico not as less than, but as a model for the modern world. At the time, many North Americans felt empty in their over-industrialized and depersonalized society. People visited and moved to Mexico to learn from a nation rebuilding its future on the foundation of its indigenous history and culture. And what do you like about this work? I like that Siqueiros' figures invade the viewer's space. They confront us. Through the artist's use of extreme foreshortening, the bound hands seem gigantic. He doesn't let the viewer slide by. Looking at this lithograph, we can't gloss over the timeless and universal horrors of racist violence. When I look at this work, I think first, we need to change our present image. And second, if I was seeing this print for the first time, I'd want to know more about the artist. Well, Siqueiros was a very outspoken artist and political activist his entire adult life. He was jailed and exiled from Mexico several times for his communist activities. While in prison, he made art in a six by 12 foot cell. I like this quote by him from 1933, quote, the painters and sculptors of today cannot remain indifferent in the struggle to free humanity and art from oppression, end quote. Artist Diego Rivera is not so in your face about his messages, but his images are also meaningful and teach us truths. Experiencing the enormous scale of his public murals in Mexico City with my high school Spanish class changed my life and sent me on the path to becoming an art historian and museum curator. I was really impressed by the intersection of art and daily life in Mexico. It was something I had never experienced growing up in Portland, Oregon. I particularly like Rivera's lithographs, Los Frutos del Trabajo en Escuela al Aire Libre from 1932 which are details from Rivera's 1928 Carrasco murals at the Secretaria de Educación Pública in Mexico City. He made these prints in New York City for a U.S. audience who perhaps couldn't travel to Mexico to see these murals in person. Why do these two works speak to you? Well, both lithographs address the theme of education, and I myself aspire to be an educator someday because I believe that getting an education shouldn't have to be a privilege. Everyone has the ability to learn, and I aspire to be someone that feeds their curiosity and will to learn. In Escuela al Aire Libre, Rivera pays homage to Mexico's rural education program in the 1920s and 30s. At the time, only 28% of the population was literate. The Secretary of Education started the Mexican mural renaissance, so people could learn from images on the walls of public buildings. He also established 1,000 rural schools and 2,000 rural libraries. In isolated villages in Mexico, teachers often encountered open hostility from locals who opposed secular education. For a time, hundreds of rural teachers were murdered, and that's why an orange guard watches protectively over the class. The Fruits of Labor also shows intergenerational learning. Yes, the title of Rivera's lithograph, Los Frutos del Trabajo, is both literal and metaphorical. The fruits of labor can be apples, like the apples that are harvested by migrant workers in the orchards of Oregon and Washington. Los Frutos del Trabajo can also be a student's education and the impact that education has on society. Rivera seems to be saying that both are essential to our individual and collective nourishment. To me, these lithographs by Rivera communicate resilience. Another image of resilience is hanging next to Rivera's lithographs in the gallery, La Sequia by Fanny Rebel, who was also a painter, printmaker, and muralist like Rivera. In my art history classes in California and New York City in the 1980s, I was taught mostly about Los Tres Grandes, or the three great ones, the most famous Mexican muralists, Diego Rivera, Jose Clemente Orozco, and David Alfaro Siqueiros. Before working on the exhibition, I had heard of Fanny Ravel's work, 
um, but I hadn't seen her art in person until Cecily Quintana shared this print with me. I know we had to be very intentional about including women artists in the exhibition. Yes, Mexican women and women from foreign countries who settled in Mexico made important contributions to the graphic arts. Unfortunately, their works have not been collected very much in the Northwest. And early 20th century prints by uh, women printmakers in Mexico don't come up for sale very often. I would have loved to have interviewed Fanny Rabel. She has a very interesting story. She was born Fanny Rabinovich in Poland. She moved with her family to Mexico to escape Nazi violence. She studied art in Mexico, was a student of artist Frida Kahlo, and she joined Mexico City's print collective, the Taller de Grafica Popular, in 1950. Ravel assisted Rivera and Siqueros on large scale public murals, and she went to paint around six public murals herself in Mexico. What do you like about La Sequia? What holds my interest in La Sequia is Ravel's attention to a detail, her distinct expressive textures of earth and sky, textile and skin. The artist brings emotion to life in the lines of the indigenous woman's face. They suggest grief and at the same time communicate strength and endurance. Her hands cradle a dead stock almost at the viewer's eye level. And why did you choose to exhibit La Sequia next to Rivera's lithographs? For a few reasons. I wanted to show a woman artist other than Frida Kahlo next to Diego Rivera and another woman a muralist printmaker next to Rivera's work. I wanted viewers to compare how Ravel and Rivera depict women's subjects. And I wanted to highlight the differences between lithography and linoleum cut and how printing can, techniques can reinforce an artist's message through different qualities of line and shape. Do you wanna talk about Rivera and lithography first? And then I'll talk about Ravel and linoleum cut. Sure. Rivera's drawing technique was superb. Lithography allowed him to draw freely on the polished surface of a lithograph stone with a waxy crayon. His fine delicate lines like baby's hair made smooth rounded forms. Rivera remarked to the gallerist who commissioned and sold these prints that he was seduced by the quote, directness of contact, end quote, of crayon on stone. In both the fruits of labor and open air school, Rivera uses spherical shapes, a circular composition of figures and soft tones, which reinforce his socio-political ideals of peace and strength in equality, unity, and harmony. In contrast, Fanny Ravel gouges onto a linoleum sheet with a V-shaped knife called a chisel, leaving the printing image as the raised surface. Jagged lines and edges effectively communicate the anguish, despair, and harsh realities of La Sequia. If you'd like to watch a demonstration of the relief printing process of lithography um, as well, the following videos produced by the Museum of Modern Art in New York City were suggested by our partner, Mary Weaver Chapin, curator of prints and drawings at the Portland Art Museum. Thank you, Wendy. I enjoyed our conversation. Let's do it again. Thank you, Cheryl. I like that. For Almuerzo y Arte part two, let's talk about four prints in the exhibition that address the Mexican Revolution. I hope you can join us. <music>